NASA's $150 billion space station is collapsing. Toxic leaks, cracks everywhere, astronauts literally hiding from fumes. Then Elon drops this bombshell. One starship holds more space than the entire ISS for $10 million. NASA's cutting budgets while SpaceX builds orbital cities. Is this the end of government space programs forever? Let's dive right in. Right now, 250 miles above Earth, astronauts are literally sealing themselves into safe rooms. Toxic fumes from a Russian cargo ship just leaked into the International Space Station. Again, the crew had 30 seconds to grab emergency masks before the air became unbreathable. But here's what NASA isn't telling you. This isn't an accident anymore. It's a pattern. The Zvezda module has been leaking since 2019. Engineers can't figure out if it's stress fractures or failed welds. And here's the terrifying part. This isn't some storage closet. This is the life support headquarters. Everything keeping humans alive in space runs through this cracking, leaking module. How did we get here? The ISS is running on 1980s technology. Your smartphone has more computing power than the systems keeping astronauts alive. It's like trying to stream Netflix on Windows 95. Except when this crashes, people die. And NASA's solution? Patch it with space duct tape and hope for the best. But while they're playing maintenance crew to a dying station, Something earth-shattering just happened in Texas. Picture this scene. NASA engineers who spent their entire careers building the ISS, sitting in a conference room, watching SpaceX presentations about Starship. The numbers on the screen didn't make sense. They checked them twice. Three times. One Starship, 1,000 cubic meters of space. The entire ISS, 935 cubic meters. Launch cost for one Starship, $10 million. Total cost of the ISS, $150 billion. Can you imagine that moment? Watching your life's work become instantly obsolete. It's like master carriage builders seeing their first automobile. The game didn't just change, it ended. But wait, there's more. And this is where it gets absolutely insane. Remember when NASA said full-flow stage combustion was impossible? Too complex, too dangerous, too expensive. Russian engineers tried it for decades. They failed. American engineers called it a fool's errand. Then SpaceX walked into the room with Raptor 3. This engine produces 280 tons of thrust. That's 100,000 pounds more than Raptor 2. But here's the kicker. It weighs 170 pounds less. How is that even possible? It's like making a Ferrari faster by removing the engine block. The secret? SpaceX eliminated 1,000 external parts. 1,000. They didn't just redesign the engine, they reimagined what an engine could be. While NASA patches leaks with billion-dollar band-aids, SpaceX is printing rocket engines with metal 3D printers. And the efficiency? 350 seconds specific impulse. That's only 10 seconds behind the legendary RS-25 that powered the space shuttle. Except Raptor 3 cost $2 million to build. RS-25, $146 million each. Do the math. SpaceX can build 73 Raptor engines for the cost of one RS-25. 73. Here's something that'll blow your mind. NASA built the ISS out of aluminum. Space-grade aluminum, sure, but still basically fancy foil. Every piece of debris becomes a potential bullet. Astronauts live in constant fear of micrometeorites punching holes through their walls. SpaceX looked at this and laughed. Starship? Stainless steel. The same stuff in your kitchen sink, but engineered for space warfare. This isn't just tougher. It's a completely different universe. Radiation that would cook aluminum? Steel shrugs it off. Temperature swings from minus 250 to plus 250 degrees? Steel doesn't care. Space debris traveling at 17,000 miles per hour? Bring it on. But here's the part that keeps NASA executives awake at night. Steel is cheaper, way cheaper, and easier to repair. If something breaks on the ISS, you're basically screwed. The parts cost millions, take years to develop, and require perfect weather windows to launch. If something breaks on Starship, you land it, drive it to a shop, fix it like a truck, and launch it again next week. It's the difference between a Formula One race car and a pickup truck. 
Sure, the F1 car is more advanced, but which one would you rather own? Let me show you some math that literally broke hearts at NASA headquarters. The ISS, 25 years to build, $150 billion spent, houses seven people maximum, requires three countries and 15 space agencies to operate. Starship, two years to build, $10 million to launch, houses over 100 people, operated by one company in Texas. But wait, there's more. SpaceX isn't building one Starship. They're building hundreds. Mass production, like cars rolling off an assembly line. While NASA debates whether to patch another leak, SpaceX is planning orbital neighborhoods. And here's the number that made NASA's blood run cold. SpaceX could launch 1,500 Starships for the cost of maintaining the ISS for one year. 1,500. You're not looking at competition anymore. You're looking at complete annihilation. Remember that impossible engine I mentioned? Here's how impossible it really is. Raptor 1 looked like a flying spaghetti monster. Cables everywhere, external plumbing, heat shields, fire suppression systems. It worked, but barely. Raptor 2 cleaned things up a bit. Still complex, still fragile, but functional. Then came Raptor 3, and the entire aerospace industry went silent. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone when they released the first pictures. This couldn't possibly be the entire engine, he said. It looks like they stripped off all the outer components. They hadn't. That was it. The whole engine. SpaceX had achieved something that seemed physically impossible. They made complexity disappear, not by adding more parts, but by eliminating them entirely. It's like Apple designing a smartphone with three buttons instead of 50. How? Metal 3D printing. Instead of assembling thousands of parts, they print entire sections as single pieces. Those cooling channels you need for extreme temperatures, printed directly into the metal. Those sensors that keep failing, eliminated. Those flanges that leak, gone. The result? An engine so advanced it looks primitive. So complex it appears simple. So powerful it seems effortless. Then came the moment that changed everything. The Trump administration walked into NASA and dropped a nuclear bomb on their budget. A 24% cut, half a billion dollars slashed from the ISS program in one meeting. The message was crystal clear. Stop throwing taxpayer money at dying technology and embrace the future. But here's what really happened behind those closed doors. NASA administrators finally admitted what they'd known for years. They'd been beaten, completely, utterly, embarrassingly beaten by a private company that started in a warehouse, Boeing Starliner. Years behind schedule, billions over budget, still not safe to carry humans. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Crew Dragon had been flawlessly delivering astronauts for years. The writing wasn't just on the wall, it was carved in stone. If NASA was willing to cancel flagship programs like SLS and Gateway after spending $50 billion, what chance did smaller failures have? Zero. While NASA cuts missions and reduces research capacity, SpaceX is designing something that sounds like science fiction. Vertical cities in space. Not space stations. Space civilizations. Picture this. Multiple starships linked together in a rotating ring. Artificial gravity from centrifugal force. Shopping malls, restaurants, hotels, research labs, manufacturing facilities. Kids born in space who've never seen Earth's surface. Sound crazy? SpaceX is already testing the components. Starship can land and take off from any flat surface. No launch pads, no billion-dollar infrastructure. Just fuel and go. And because everything is reusable, space travel becomes like air travel. Feeling homesick? Take the next flight down. Need supplies? Launch another Starship. Emergency on Earth? Evacuate a thousand people in a single trip. But here's the most shocking part. SpaceX isn't just planning space stations. They're building the infrastructure for multiple worlds, super heavy boosters for launch, Dragon capsules for crew transport, Starlink satellites for communications, Raptor engines for interplanetary travel. NASA spent 25 years building one laboratory in space. SpaceX is building the foundation for human civilization among the stars. So here's where we stand. The ISS, humanity's greatest achievement in space, is dying. Cracks spreading, air leaking, 
toxic fumes filling the corridors. NASA's solution? Throw more money at the problem and hope it lasts another five years? SpaceX's solution? Replace it with something three times bigger, 15,000 times cheaper, and infinitely more capable. The question isn't whether Starship will replace the ISS anymore. That's already decided. The question is whether NASA will have any role in humanity's space future at all. Because right now, watching SpaceX catch rockets out of midair while NASA patches leaks with duct tape, it's looking a lot like game over. So there you have it. In just three years, SpaceX didn't just build a better space station, they made the entire concept of space stations obsolete. While NASA counts pennies and patches leaks, Musk is literally catching skyscrapers out of midair. But here's what really gets me. This isn't just about replacing the ISS. This is about humanity's next chapter. Are we going to stay trapped in low Earth orbit, fixing the same problems over and over? Or are we ready to become that multi-planetary species we've dreamed about? Because if SpaceX can make space travel cheaper than a cross-country flight, what happens next? Space hotels? Orbital manufacturing? Cities on Mars? What do you think comes after Starship? Drop your wildest predictions in the comments. And if this blew your mind like it did mine, hit that subscribe button. Because trust me, we're just getting started with humanity's space future. The game isn't just over for NASA, it's just beginning for all of us. NASA still can't replace the dying ISS after 25 years of trying. Vast just built a luxury space hotel in two years that left SpaceX absolutely stunned. While NASA's billion-dollar lab leaks air, the startup created maple-walled suites with Starlink Internet. The impossible just happened. But why can't NASA do what a crypto-funded startup did? Let's dive right in. Here's the uncomfortable truth NASA doesn't want you to know. The International Space Station is literally dying. Air leaks happening weekly. Failed computer systems older than most astronauts. Cooling pumps breaking down every few months. This $150 billion science lab has become a floating death trap. And NASA spent 25 years trying to replace it with nothing. While NASA throws billions at contractors who keep missing deadlines, something impossible just happened. A startup nobody heard of three years ago just built what NASA couldn't, a luxury space hotel that left SpaceX executives speechless. But here's the part that'll blow your mind. They did it with crypto money and a team smaller than NASA's coffee budget committee. Meet Jed McCaleb, the guy who helped create Ripple and made billions watching numbers go up on screens. In 2021, he looked at NASA's decades of failure and thought something most billionaires wouldn't dare. I can build a better space station in my garage. Most crypto billionaires buy sports teams or islands. Michaela bought himself a space program. He founded VAST with one impossible goal. Prove that private companies can do in years what NASA can't do in decades. The result? Haven One, a space station so advanced it makes the ISS look like a hardware store from the 1990s. But here's where it gets absolutely insane. Picture floating 250 miles above Earth in what looks like a five-star hotel room. Maple wood panels line the walls. Actual wood in space. Soft LED lighting makes everything feel warm and human. There's a massive 1.1 meter dome window giving you a 180 degree view of Earth spinning below every 90 minutes. This isn't some concept art. This is Haven One launching May 2026. The entire station is just 45 cubic meters, smaller than most studio apartments. Yet designed to house four astronauts in luxury, the ISS could never match. While NASA's astronauts sleep by wedging themselves into cabinets like human cargo, Haven 1 has inflatable beds that apply gentle pressure like weighted blankets in zero gravity. But wait, there's something NASA's engineers said was impossible. Here's what left SpaceX stunned. VAST didn't try to reinvent rocket science. They took NASA's proven shuttle life support system, the simple open-loop design, and perfected it with Silicon Valley thinking. Instead of over-engineering everything like NASA, they asked one question. What if we just built what actually works? 
the genius move nobody saw coming? When SpaceX's Dragon capsule docks to Haven 1, it doesn't just drop off astronauts and leave. It becomes part of the station, instantly doubling the living space. It's like parking your RV next to your cabin and suddenly having twice the room. Think about this. NASA spent decades building redundant backup systems for everything. VAST just uses SpaceX as their backup. One decision saved them years of development and billions of dollars. This is why NASA's traditional approach is dying. Now here's where things get absolutely mind-blowing. Haven 1 will be the first space station connected to Starlink. While ISS astronauts deal with laggy video calls that sound like they're underwater, Haven 1 astronauts will have gigabit internet speeds. What does this mean? Real-time 4K video calls with Earth. Massive scientific data uploads happening in seconds instead of hours. Maybe even live streaming from orbit like it's just another Tuesday at the office. Scientists could collaborate in real time across continents while floating above them. But there's something NASA desperately doesn't want you to know about why this matters so much. In May 2024, something happened at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center that shocked everyone in the room. VAST brought Haven 1's life support system for the ultimate test, the same facility that's been pushing aerospace boundaries since we went to the moon. They sealed the system, injected chemical contaminants that would build up with four people living inside for weeks, then turned on the filters. The goal, prove Haven 1 could maintain clean, breathable air in worst-case scenarios. The result? Haven 1 didn't just pass. It exceeded every benchmark NASA had set. This was the moment NASA realized a crypto-funded startup had just out-engineered them using simpler, more elegant solutions. The same agency that put humans on the moon got schooled by a company that didn't exist three years ago. Here's what's absolutely mind-blowing about VAST's timeline. They announced Haven 1 in 2023. By July 2025, the primary structure was already assembled. They're entering testing phase this summer, 